This episode of the Rainbow Brain Skull Hour podcast is brought to you by Onnit Buffalo Battle Ropes. If you enter in the code name ROGAN at checkout, you can receive 50% off your order of battle bars, buffalo blow branch presses, and bow and arrow bells for your battalion brothers. My guest this week is the amazing Lisa Delarius. Hit it! Do I sound to you? And is your headphone on? Do no. do this oh. thing. It's active, so it's got little batteries in it gotcha. that make sure it makes the sound louder. That's the, that's the extent to which I understand active technology. It's, it's got batteries in it, and that's it. So you hear me, okay? I hear you great. You sound smooth. You sound really smooth. You've got a good radio voice. I do. Yeah. Do you not feel that? People. I mean, I will say that people have been telling me that lately. I've been getting compliments on my so voice. So it's changed? It wasn't always that way? I don't know. I just feel like people have started mentioning it more. People never mention. I didn't, I didn't have an awareness that I might have had a smooth voice. <laughs> there, see, there it is. The, uh, there again, the smooth voice. It's deep. I have a deep voice, and I have realized that I've really... As my love of karaoke has blossomed, I'd say in the past decade, I realized how much I love karaoke. How often do you go? Um, I mean, let's say an average, not as much as I'd like, to be honest, I mean, but I, 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 I'd say, you know, let's average once a month, I try to get out and do some karaoke. Oh, that's not often enough. You got to go it's at least not. once a week, even though I don't go even once a month, but back in... Austin, I used to always go with uh, the late, great Matt Willis, who is still with us and not dead, but I just like to refer to people <laughs> that are in different towns as late and great, but we used to always go uh, to Common Interest Sports Bar and Karaoke. That is the best. I mean, I can't, I've had, I can't decide if I like the public room or the private rooms, but it all depends on who's in the private room, but I've had some magical moments in the, you know, when you get the private room. Oh yeah, you don't have to tell me about the private room. <laughs> <laughs> you think I've never been inside of a private room before? <laughs> you know, public versus private. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, my favorite part of uh, going to that uh, common interest in Austin, Texas, in a strip mall, uh, usually after Cap City, right? Mm -hmm. Like group of people and Mark. The bartender from Cap City, who's now gone on. Rest to, in peace. Yeah, he's no dead. longer the late at Cap great, City. The late great. Now he's like, I don't know, working to improve the environment or something. Is he really? He has like an engineering degree or something. Yeah, like um, ener energy resource something. I'm real proud of him. Me but too. He's such a sweetie. Such a dear. And I can't decide if we should start this now or whether it's already started. I guess we'll figure out in editing, but just in in case I start it here, now it's starting. But we okay. also might include that initial part because this is a super loosey-goosey. I like to just keep it just very conversational, very um, uh, unedited Love it. Um, there's nothing you don't want to talk about, right? Um, I don't pry that much. I'm not Howard Stern. I'm not trying to make anyone uncomfortable. I mean, I don't want to talk about my parents making love. Okay. So that time <laughs> that your father had spread open your mother. <laughs> I'm stealing that from Jim Norton. Did you see that Jim Norton stand-up special where he's asking people if they've ever run into their parents having sex and one person like just kind of reluctantly raised their hand. And then he's like asking more questions like, okay, okay, I know you don't want to talk about it, but what position <laughs> were they in? And then is like missionary. And then eventually she agrees like, okay, now were your mother's legs wrapped <laughs> around your father or, and no. he just goes into all these <laughs> question details that I thought were very silly. Cause he's a silly man. That's my first, uh, my first ever hearing about you was in Austin when Maria Bamford came to town and there was oh. Maria Bamford and Friends listed as the the bill. And she was like, oh, is Lisa going to be here? And then really? they said, no, Lisa moved to New York. And then she goes, 
oh and i'm like who's who's lisa and they're like oh you don't know lisa lisa used to live here but and you were one of these mythological figures much like i guess david huntsberger was another one people that had had lived here and then had moved off to magical cities such as los angeles and new york and you try to find pictures of them somewhere it's like oh that that's that's her there that's him there and it's kind of um i guess snl people go through that too right yeah yeah, i guess so but I, but I was just a legend in the Austin comedy scene from the early 2000s. Uh-huh. How, I, many, how many places did you move around? Because you've, you've lived here in Los Angeles, New York. You lived in Austin. Yeah. You've gone back and forth between them. Between the three. Yeah. That's what I'm a legend for, is just <laughs> moving. Uh, no one can keep track of where I am, including me. I, I'm from Texas, born in Dallas, and grew up kind of East Texas, Tyler, you know, Tyler, Ty- yeah. you know, Tyler out yeah. near Shreveport. Oh yeah, of course. I went to Robert E. Lee High. Oh damn! <laughs> Not to brag, <laughs> uh, and and but I took off to New York City when I was like twenty, and I think I had this general idea of I'm going to do stand up comedy. Somebody had given me a book about doing stand up comedy. I think it was Judy Carter's book. Were you always funny amongst your friends? Were you the funny one? I was amongst my friends, but like in general, I, I was very shy. Like with people I didn't know, like if I would ever get called on in class, my face would turn bright red. And I was super afraid of the world. And I think that was my other reason for moving to New York. Because I. I didn't even consider staying in Dallas and doing stand-up comedy at the one comedy club there in in the 90s. What was it then? It wasn't an improv back then, was it? There was a... Hyenas? There is... There, I don't even know if there was a hyenas. I, knew there, I know there was like the improv in Addison, which is like a suburb, but there was some comedy club called the Backdoor Comedy Club, which still exists. Um, and it's all clean, too. It's all clean there. Yeah, you can't say swears, and it's called the Backdoor Comedy Club. Yeah. What's that about? Mixed know. messages. Oh, yeah, it well, is. We know what they mean by back door. Mm-hmm. Like, not the front door. Yeah, they're talking about when you go over to someone's house. Like, if you want to sneak in to kiss them, you yeah. go in through the back. Yeah, especially if you don't know them and you want to break in mm-hmm. and surprise them. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's see. I left Dallas and I moved to New York City with my college money that had been set aside by one of my great aunts. Oh, cool. I used that money to just move to New York to start doing stand-up comedy. And, and then I moved, I don't know. And, and then I moved, where'd I go? Oh, and then I moved to Los Angeles at some point. I lived in New York for a few years and then I was like, no, I need to go to LA. And I'm not sure why I thought that was important. I think it was more about I just wanted to have a yard oh, and be yeah. able to do comedy. And one of my close friends had moved out here and I came to visit and I was like, this is great. And they had yards back then? They had yards back then and orange trees in yards, even for Ooh. not rich people. Wow. I know. I lived in Silver Lake and my rent was under $700. Oh. And I had my own place. Wow. And I did have a peeping Tom. Wow, I keep it's worth bra- it. I, I keep bragging. <laughs> it was worth it. Uh, and then I moved. I don't know if we want to just keep talking about my moves. Um, well, let's I get mean, to I've a conclusion dan- of it. My, this is my dance moves. <laughs> <laughs> when when so, you moved, was it was it all of a sudden like I got to get out of here now, or was it? Uh, yes, I used to do this very impulsively. You get a wild hair, as w- it's called. Wild hair. I don't like to use that that much. I don't know why, because I don't like the imagery it, it mm-hmm. creates, and I never associate it with it. But it yeah. it gets the point across. It's I guess. very pube like. Yeah, <laughs> you don't just, think of yeah because it's. Yeah. I live my life like pubic hair. <laughs> one pube at a time. <laughs> one wild pube. Woo! Where's it going to go? Following the wild, kinky curl so of the life. So the then, then sends you to L.A. and then... Yeah, in L.A. And then I went back to New York for a couple of years. Then I decided I had never lived in Austin before. I was a Texan, but had never lived in Austin. And I decided I'm going to go to Austin and do comedy. And, and I just thought it would be better and easier which it was it is and 
It is. And I made a great community of friends. That was back in the day of... How long were you there for? Um, that stretch, I was there from 04 till 07. Usually, like, I get the three-year itch. And that's uh, why I'm like, I got to get out of here. I stayed for almost a decade. Oh, that's impressive. Yeah, I guess. I, f- I feel like I'm getting better. Like, I'm starting to stay for longer stretches. I don't think it's good. I think you should no? leave after... I think high school or um, college, like, that four-year span is the perfect amount. And not necessarily for a city, but definitely your place or to reconsider what you're doing in your your career or... Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's something about that number. And maybe it's for just people like us, you know? We're just... Wild, crazy pants. Wild, crazy pube pants. Uh, yeah. You know, and somebody, a friend recently asked me today, a friend who's not in the arts or showbiz, like a kind of Can norm- we borrow normal money from person. Them? I know. <laughs> Working on it. And she was like, do you feel like you found your place? I was like, what? <laughs> no. What does that mean? Like, no, I don't even understand what that means. I, I feel like yeah. There, as long as there's other places that I haven't been, I don't know. But but everywhere I go, I do feel like I set down sort of shallow roots at least. I feel like I get to know my neighbors and you know, like I started the recycling program in my building. Oh, in, you're pretty in New proactive York. then. Yeah, I like community and and I definitely feel like I'm at that point in my life where I don't want to move somewhere where I don't know anyone. I mean, I'll never say never. Maybe I will move to Iceland or something, but I liked, I mean, that was what was, so the trajectory went Austin. My most recent, I left New York city in my most recent leaving of New York city was 2015. Mm -hmm. And I went back to Austin for the second time, second go. Uh, and that wouldn't, and that actually I decided I was going to go back to Austin and get my stage legs back because I had gone down some different roads in New York during that period. I worked. It's so easy to lose your stage stage legs in the bigger cities just because if you're not constantly grinding away at it, I feel like I don't know a soul in this town that thinks they're doing enough stand up everyone thinks they're like no i'm not really part of the actual scene and it's people that you think are the main yeah. pillars of the scene and they're just beating themselves up like no i don't i don't go up enough people don't like me people don't think about me and that is like propagated across everybody it is and you know what that's what i really like about what you're putting out there Rami. thank you tell me more let's talk about you for a second no i really was exploring your website and your which is when you asked me to do this podcast, actually, Carrie Lendo, my dear, dear friend, Carrie had told me she did your podcast. Shout like, out Carrie Lendo, episode seven. I don't know. Look it up. Carrie's like the coolest human being. Um, we've been friends for a long time. I just love her. Uh, but she, I was like, oh, what's, you know, I've always, you're kind of a legend too. Like you are totally doing I am your own thing. And that, I feel like you're, you're a, pioneer you're just you have a thank you keep going you just are this is like the whole podcast now yeah and i and so she was like oh death was because i was like oh what's his pod you know what's his podcast about because a lot of them are just like let's just get together and chat about it kind of is comedy that, but, but i realized that as i was putting out the the little image for it i'm like i can't just say that i'll say like what and i basically came up with what the themes were across those first few episodes and decided to keep them going which we'll also visit on during this one but go on good so it's creativity mm-hmm. what else motivation motivation and death mm-hmm. i was like oh hell yeah I want to. I want to do that. I want to talk about these things. Yeah, and they can. You can see them as uh, creativity is the momentum towards, or the motion towards infinite expansion Mm -hmm. in all directions, or whatever direction you want. Death is the you know closing of that. Like it's putting a boundary on someone. Like when someone dies, there's a set amount of meals they had, set amount of things they said, set amount of thoughts they thought. So they're now in a bounded state to the rest of the world to the experiencer like to the person that went through that death who knows like they're on the other side so they're off experiencing it but to the people in this 
this physical world, there's now a boundary over them. And motivation is, we all know what that is. There's the stuff we want to do, and we don't do it. We want to eat better. We want to work out more. We want to uh, be with friends more. We want to actually sit down and write and do that thing. And we don't do it. Most of the time, we just don't. We and just don't. we know it's the right thing to do, and instead we are destroying ourselves. And I'm trying to fix that a little bit more every day and see how other people fix it or see how I can help them fix it or how they can help me fix it. And I like that. I like what you're putting out there. Um, yeah, you, like, you're, you're like, I was thinking about your, because you were saying, now I'm trying to remember one of your art posters had uh, something you said earlier about the negativity. Oh, anyway, I can't remember. I was going to connect something there. But yeah, I mean, I was thinking about like I work with kids sometimes in my day job and, and it's so weird that they just want to play video games. That's all they want to do. Or they, just they, watch it sometimes, right? Oh yeah, or just watch it. They want to watch Twitch. They don't even want to play don't wanna, it themselves. They don't want to go outside. They don't want to be pioneers. It's it's is, is that our human is that like our default to just want to be blobs? I don't, I don't know. think so. I think this is just this sample size of kids, and maybe yeah. it's where you're catching them in the day. But where are these kids coming from? Like, what's their background? Um, and I'm yeah. not asking a racial question. I'm just trying no, to get no. along. Like, I'm thinking <laughs> what age color groups? skin are these kids? <laughs> um, sort of like red <laughs> with acne. Oh, Native American. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe it's not even an interesting tangent, but uh, hey, none of these back. tangents are interesting, and that's okay. That's the that's the pod. Uh, that's the pod. Yeah, don't judge yourself for anything. Like, oh, this what is, this is going to be interesting. You're we're right. Gonna, we're going right. to go into I the minutia. I just have so many of, things I wanted to talk about with you. Oh, we will. Um, okay, good. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know. I, for example, this eleven year old, Caucasian eleven year old, <laughs> um, who whose parents are open-minded creative people uh i don't know he i drive him home from school sometimes and he keeps telling me how he wants to be a youtube star (laughs) and that's the coolest job possible and i was like what kind what are you gonna do on youtube he's like i don't know play minecraft he's like there's this one guy who plays Minecraft and he's on YouTube and he's got like all these followers and he just makes money doing that. Yep, they do. There's a kid and his dad who just cuts things in half and they make millions of dollars. There's a 12 year old girl that makes slime and shows videos how to make slime. And you and I are no different in that we're just from a different generation where we saw a stand up on TV and thought like, oh, I can do that. And now they're this new version of it. So I don't I don't judge them for it. He definitely needs more of a plan than just imitating <laughs> what that other guy did. But it's like finding out what is your truth that you can consistently put out there, grow an audience, and then make money through selling merch, subscriptions, or uh, advertising. That's the only three ways you can make money. Otherwise, you're you know, selling your time. Which... Right. But I like I like what you're putting out because you seem like you're actually trying to promote... Uh, a positive outlook and inspire people to work past the negativity and the fear and yeah get over the hump get over the hump you got to get and over that's the hump. what i like what you're putting down thank you you're like alan watts meets tony robbins oh cool i love both of them i don't know i like alan watts more but, yes uh but of course tony robbins is going to lend himself to that more because he's alive and he's doing well, whereas Alan Watts was a drunk, and I think we like these tortured dead people more than yeah. a live person. That's there's there's a certain tackiness to Tony Robbins because it takes place in a hotel convention center and he's telling everyone to jump up and down and <laughs> get the get the blood moving and all that. I mean, I watched I'm Not Your Guru. I've watched a lot of the the tapes and he's he's fantastic. Like you can't. And I haven't watched. It. I haven't watched oh, haven't? much Tony Robbins. No, I just pulled that out because I was like, oh, I know he's a motivational speaker, and 
that type in a he convention center. He swears a lot in the gu- Does not he? my guru one. He says fuck so much. I think that's the first fuck I said. So now I have to mark this podcast as explicit, which I mark yes. all of them as explicit anyway. But in the little uploader thing, it's like, is this clean, explicit, or none? And I'm like, mm, it like depends on your definition of explicit. But he says, <laughs> he says like, he doesn't say fuck in ways that you need to use it. It's like, you got to fucking stop doing it. It's like, you didn't need to say that, that fuck there, but he does. But, but it, I kind of like, like that kind of gives me a new respect for Tony yeah. Robbins. <laughs> yeah. Now he he's talks a little like edgy. one of the kids. Yeah. The, the beginning of that, I'm not your guru starts with him talking to the suicidal guy. And he's like, the suicidal guy can barely make a sentence. And then Tony Robbins is like, is it, is it because of the shoes? And then he's like, mm like okay because they're pretty fucking red and he's just making fun of his shoes and then the guy (laughs) the guy laughs a little bit and then he's like see that wasn't so bad there and he then gets real with him and says look i know you've got a lot to give and we often overestimate how much we can get done in a day and underestimate how much we can get done in a year and we're gonna help you feel better and he's like and not just when you're jerking off and then the guy's like Oh like kind of laugh and so he like gets right down to the he spoke bones. that guy's language mm-hmm. he totally cut through whatever yeah just broke it down yeah and i don't know where he's at a year later but i think he has a pretty high success rate of things there was one lady that gave all sold all her furniture and everything to attend the seminar because the seminar is like thousands of dollars and she didn't have thousands of dollars so she oh. sold everything to get there but as a result of that other rich people there saw her situation and she's from the children of god cult where you're a, you're like just sold into sex trafficking from a very young age so she has just the epitome of a bad you know hand being yeah, dealt not to her, her so, fault not her fault so she ended up making even more money by by going there and being around those people so it's wow. that leap of faith like you are going to be surrounded by a lot of wealth if you go to uh, a, a tony robbins thing well that makes sense i've never been to any one of those things but i always want to not just tony robbins but this other guy Sadhguru, like this uh, yogi from india does a does a big seminar thing or the Ram Dass ones or Victor Wooten's base camp and I'll look it up and it's like 3,400 and then um, just immediately click the close. Like, you know, I'll just watch their YouTube videos and try to figure it out myself. Well, that's maybe where I should go to meet a rich husband with spirituality. <laughs> do you have <laughs> Which much, is what we all want. Do you have much spirituality? Do you get into those things, the trying to figure out what it is to be an alive person and you know chakras whatever you want to call it not necessarily crystals but i wouldn't say i go in the realm of chakras i'm like just in the past three months i mean i'm not against chakras i've gotten acupuncture to uh help me with my chi Mm -hmm. which i just didn't know what chi was it's energy Uh, right I think so. Yeah. Um, And I remember like just being euphoric after that uh, and and giggly. And how long did it last? I I can't remember. It was a few years ago. Uh, It definitely didn't last permanently. When you're feeling super euphoric, is there that voice in your head that's like, this isn't like, this isn't going to last. How long is this going to last? Yes. 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 When we're when we're feeling terrible, when we're suicidal and the d- lowest, lowest depression, it's never, I'm going to get out of this. It's always, this is now how it is forever. Yeah. And I always do. I'm really good at reminding my friends and I'm not so good at reminding myself because I am really hard on myself. Is that like it, it's the ebb and the flow. Like it always, you always come out of it. Like it's, it, and I'm, I think happiness is just, I mean, it's it's a moment. You can't. There's no like permanent state of that, and or there is, and we don't see those people because they've right. elevated past this physical matrix thing. Yeah, and I don't even know that I want to be there. Like, I feel like you got to have the the darkness to have the light. You know, the the yin and the yang. Yeah. you got to have. You know, my dad comes. My dad. <laughs> oh, that would be a whole nother. My dad is. Uh, That's the sound bite I use for this episode. <laughs> my, which one? Just my dad comes. Oh. <laughs> I told you I didn't want to talk about that. Uh, my dad's like, kind of 
always been, I mean, he did a lot of acid, tons of over like 200 hits of acid, he likes to tell me. He got put into um, a psychiatric uh, hospital. His parents put him in there in the 60s oh, in okay. Dallas because he tried to convince his parents to, to drop acid. And they're like conservative. His dad's a doctor. Like, oh, and in the 60s too. Yeah. He went, he hitchhiked from Dallas to San Francisco and was um, lived in a Buddhist monastery and was studying under Suzuki Roshi, which is my dad's. He's like, oh, he was the guru. And that's how I know about Alan Watts is my dad. He's been pushing Alan Watts on me always. But, but then my parents became fundamentalist Christians. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It was like after my dad's Buddhist and my parents met. So he and, landed on that one and said, this one trumps all those ones. But then he went back to his Eastern um, beginning, sort of. Uh, and that's where he is now? Yeah, but my dad calls himself the Buddhist Catholic. Because <laughs> <laughs> then we converted to Catholicism. I converted to Catholicism, not really by choice, but as a family we did when I was like in the fifth grade. Oh, bummer. From evangelical Christianity, which... So Catholicism was, to me, like a big step up. I was like, oh, these people actually can drink al alcohol and they can dance and they're not going to go to hell. Like, it just seemed like more normal. Because ca Catholicism, correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't go to hell if you confess and you can do the sin, but as long as you accept Christ in your heart and confess, then you're good. Yeah, I guess Catholicism to me just seems a little more like, you know, just be a good person, do good works. There, I, I don't. There's not a lot of hell talk. Oh, not, I thought there was lots of hell talk. Not in no, not in the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church more is more is more about like. Um, there's a lot of shame, right? There's got to be. See, I always hear that, but I think those are people that are born and raised Catholic. Oh, but when okay. you're coming from fundamentalism into Catholicism, Catholicism seems super liberal. And and I like the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church, the aspect of it that's about like, you know, the social good and like going out and and doing good works yeah. rather than sitting around and judging everyone, which is what evangelical from my experience, it was like all about proselytizing and everyone else is going to hell and yeah, that's the rebuke word. Satan. Yeah. And the Catholic Church just doesn't seem it. But I'm, you know, that's that was just from my experience. I'm not really practicing. I don't practice any religion now. But so I did grow up with that kind of when I was a kid, I talked to God for sure. I was like, I mean, did you ever have an atheist phase where you're like, oh, this is bullshit and it's all nothing and it's all random and uh, we just happen to be in the one... Because, you know, the whole uh, regular random model of the universe is that because of the fine-tuning problem, you know, that if it goes to... If the Earth was a little farther away from the sun, the oceans would dry up. If it was a little... Or if it was a little closer, the oceans would dry up. If it was a little farther, farther away, the oceans would freeze and the whole universe if the magnetic field and gravity was just a little little bit different everything would be chaos but just the fact that it's configured in this way everything we get to witness all this form around us and the explanation is that there's infinite other universes that are a big mess and then this one is just happens to be the the right one so that's how you explain that it's a random wow. one but then there's people that say like no that's too odd like i think the universe is communicating to itself it's conscious there's consciousness everywhere and it's all one thing and we're just trying to learn and grow and elevate our octave to um think in a higher octave or be in a higher octave not just think but did you ever go through that phase of thinking it's all just random and pointless wow i'm just like processing all that stuff you just said <laughs> that's good uh you know <clears throat> i wouldn't say i've i've ever gone to any extreme i i don't i to me athe to be an atheist is not very different from being an evangelical it's like i'm all about just admitting I don't know. Like, how am I supposed to know? I If I cl walk around claiming I know 
there is no God. There is no benevolent force, you know, beyond this realm. Uh, that, like, how would I know that? I don't have proof. I don't have proof that there is or isn't. So I'm, I guess I'm, I guess I'm agnostic in that I'm open to all the possibilities. Right um, on. You know, I think, uh, I think compassion is something really interesting to think about. And, and that, where did that come from? And, and, you know, just, uh, I, I don't, I don't believe that it's just like evolutionary. I don't think something like compassion and, like the the empathy that I feel for seeing something suffer, yeah. you know, in or wanting to alleviate su- suffering, I, 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 that doesn't feel like random. It, it is evolutionary, not in the Darwin like survival of the fittest way, which Darwin actually never even used that phrase. I, I shouldn't uh, peg that to him, but he gets associated <laughs> with survival of the fittest, but right. it's evolutionary. And, uh, I may have said this rap before on here, but the, the simulation model of the universe and basically there's entropy, which is just chaos disorder and devolves into that. And there's uh, love. So it's this battle between love and entropy and uh-huh. love is seeing others as you and fear is seeing other things as separate from you. Like, so I can kill that thing, take its resources, and then I'm helping me grow. But a love-based system, like how our body works, each cell isn't thinking like, I'm the cell, I'm getting all the resources for myself. The way your whole body functions, 60 trillion cells or whatever, is because they're working in a system of like, no, we have to make sure every cell is okay, then... Like, we can have these resources. If your liver is having problems, it's not like, this is my resources. I'm keeping it. It's like, we got to go help the liver because if the liver fails, the whole body is going to fail. We got to keep this thing going together. And I love that. That's where the world is going. Like, I don't think we're overpopulated. I think we're hitting this, uh, this peak of we need to either become this love based uh, organism or we collapse because it's not going to sustain it anymore. I love that. And That's I think it happens on a micro level. I don't think it's like we put this man in office or this woman in office or this yeah. zur in office or whatever pronoun in office and then the office person takes care of stuff. I think it needs to be much more, uh, what is it, decentralized, yes. deregulated and um, just... not, not deregulated in Trump's <laughs> oh, <laughs> definition <yeah>. of deregulation. <laughs> You, I was thinking about your art poster with the music note. Oh yeah, um, what is what did I what did I say on that one? You said uh, I'm, not, I'm not a part of a song. I'm just a note. Is that right? Yeah, and that's exactly what you're talking about, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's like you're part of the whole thing. You are part of the song, and and that's, uh, you know, I've just started. It's so hard for me. We were talking earlier about trying to focus and just I mean I think it all for me like I write down all the time like practice like be in the practice of whatever and it's just just showing up to to right now what I'm trying to do is quote meditate for 10 minutes a day and just I'm sitting in a chair I don't have a mantra that I paid a thousand (laughs) dollars I'm just sitting in a chair counting to 10 over and over this this is my dad he was like all right this is your basic meditation uh he wants I like to- how he takes on the surfer uh, <laughs> persona when he's telling you oh yeah my dad's a texan so he's like he's like he's got a little bit of a twang but he talks like this he's oh, like yeah, there we go yeah you just gotta you know just sit in a chair sit erect which of course i giggle um and you know just like a soft focus at one spot on the floor and just count to 10 over and over. And if you lose track, just start over again. And, and that I've been trying to do. And, uh, it's, and I, I did every now and then I smoke pot. I don't do it. I try not to do it socially because then I get too weird. No such thing. 
no such thing is too weird. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, guess yeah, you're I right. could be proven wrong. Or actually, no, you can't. You can eat edibles, and the world can get really weird really quick. And then, then you're like, okay, I, I, I fold. Please go back to normal reality where it's predictable. I'm, yes. I'm sorry, I challenged you, but yes, I'm more coming from a place of where uh, there's way too much small talk and not enough real weird talk and like weird ideas or jokes that bomb or just yeah take that chance be weird especially in front of your friends and if there's also partaking you're right yeah that's why i like what you're doing thank you uh yeah i think i'm never gonna say oh stop i'm i'm (laughs) I'm compliment hungry i need i need we're we all kind of need or maybe i'm just one of the infected with the illness but this whole social media thing with stories now where it's like if you post five pieces of content a day it's not enough to stay stay relevant so you must conclude that oh i guess i shouldn't stay i shouldn't try to stay relevant i should be focused on being irrelevant (laughs) yeah i guess or just being authentic you know and then relevancy will come and go and who knows? I could be very like Van Gogh didn't sell a single painting. It might not have been Van Gogh, but I know one of those big artist guys didn't sell a single painting and their yeah. whole life died poor and alone. And then they become held as these very important people. And then there's pop bands today that are selling out giant arenas that'll be completely forgotten in 75 years. No yeah. trace of them. Yeah. Well, you you have this uh, collection that you I th- I admire that. Like you're just you continue building this collection of um, stuff. Stuff. Frank and it's, Zappa would call it his like Frank Zappa, the musician, the composer. He would say that all of his songs were part of one big glorious whole that he called project object oh my so anything God. <laughs> he did it's like it all fits in together so i like relate to that i'm like i'm working on project object right now it's hell yeah the big the big thing at the very end i i need a project object you I don't have like, one already no i don't i mean i don't be, i mean you're already in the you're already in the arts you are you already are a stand up you can't go back now you've already no, it's you've already true. done it you've been on television and done all these things so it's not like oh I'll start stand up you can only continue stand up but what part of the object do you feel within is missing do you wish that you were making music writing books making films what's the thing that you want to do but the resistance is stopping you mm. I mean, I think I just need to break it down into a baby step of just writing regularly. Like, once again, the just getting down basic practice because I know that's where it all... You know, if I think too big, like, I need to be making film. I would love to... I'm very visual. I would love to to make short films. And I think that I would really enjoy that medium but it just seems overwhelming uh when i can't even show up to and not when i say write it doesn't even have to be like physically writing it's just um you know focused mental energy on play on yeah you know it's just not thinking about all that other crap and, and just Give it, and, and I did have a therapist once who said, you just need to let yourself play. The opposite of play is depression. It's yeah. not work. Yeah. And I feel like I have such monkey mind all the time. I think that's a Gary, you know, my dad, Gary. Uh, well, I thought you were referring mind. Gary Shandling, but I like that your dad's Gary too. Oh, yeah. He's totally Gary. Um, but, you know, that's what my dad's like. You've got the monkey mind. You, And I do. I have anxiety. I get like... Because I want to be able to do it all and do it all really well and I'm just really mean to myself and impatient with myself. and Me too, sister. Yeah? But oh, you yeah, seem like day. you have it figured out. But your, your message that you're putting out there is you're pep-talking yourself. Yeah, that's how it started. It was a pep-talk for myself that I decided to release and was hesitant to release because I'm like, I'm a comedian. This isn't that funny. This is like you know, motivational. And Mm -hmm. then, you know, I had a lot of resistance for that. And then I watched something saying that might have been a Brene Brown lecture where fear and 
vulnerability or the birth pra- birth birth place of creativity <laughs> birthplace of create i do racist accents on here because it's my podcast i don't care i'm brown i can do whatever i want you uh, sure can hello, i'm a racist <laughs> uh, then um the birthplace of of creativity and shame drives two tapes so the two tapes that shame drives are you're not good enough and the other one is who do you think you are so the first one is saying you're not good enough to do this stuff and then if you do end up becoming good enough to do this stuff you feel this like embarrassment of like who are you to like put that out like we're that's not what we're doing right now we're talking shit right now we're like we're being low right now and you're gonna try to you know, post a picture of a flower or something, get out of here. Yeah. So, uh, and Wayne White talks about it in that film, Beauty is Embarrassing, because... Uh, I've never heard of that. If you're releasing something beautiful, you're going to feel embarrassment, because that's, they're intertwined yeah. together. It's really good. Wayne White is the the guy that did Pee Wee's Playhouse, all the puppets to that. He did that Smashing Pumpkins video, Tonight Tonight, with the moon, and he has a very distinct style that's embedded within the 90s, but no one knew this dude's name, but everyone knows the look. Like, his look is is everywhere, and it's unmistakable. Oh, my God. And this... he's a really salty, like, guy that makes, like, these word paintings now that say, just fuck you on them. That's, that's boiling it down. It's much more in-depth than that. I'm trying to think of what they say, but he was, he's a big inspiration, too. I see myself as... Um, he, he influenced me a lot in, I guess, throughout my childhood, and then again when I figured out who that guy was and watching that documentary, it was a big shift. I have shift. to see this. You should. I'm I'm going to see where you can get it. I think it's still on Netflix, but I don't know. I'll find it. It's called Beauty is Embarrassing? Mm-hmm. I think with a G or with an apostrophe. He definitely says it embarrassing because he's from the South. <laughs> or is he from Texas? Where is he from? Tennessee? What, no, he's yeah, I think he's from, from Tennessee, but he grew up in a place where art was just a thing where you get it Kmart and no one understood it. And he's had ups and downs in his career and he's super depressive and overworks himself and had a big breakdown when he was just animating by himself all the time and being one man animation studio i think got into opiates and stuff a lot it's all in the in the documentary but uh and he lives here oh that'd be so great to get him on here one day i want to get wayne white on here i'm manifesting people that i want wayne are you out there yeah get on here yeah get on here you'll love it i manifested you by not even speaking to you i typed into the facebook box next to your image asking you to come on here and then you showed up the next day and we didn't speak an actual sound word to each other no you just you just showed up and i think that's pretty cool although while i was typing i was saying sure no (laughs) okay that throws my theory i wasn't i wasn't but i was uh, silent i was silently agreeing to meet you here oh good what was was there a point to all that? Basically, the um, I'm trying to come back to you want to write more, and you said that you started doing your meditation practice more, which is just sitting down, and that's it, just sitting down. It's just showing up. It's just sitting, and it's ten minutes. I set an alarm on my phone, and uh, oh, I was gonna say, you know, like <laughs> I tried that Headspace app, but that's like more distraction you know i don't too like much talking too much talking and now i get these like promotional emails from headspace <laughs> they're like we've teamed up with nike i'm like that's exactly <laughs> what meditation is supposed to get away from isn't it funny how they like get co-opted by exactly the opposite like like just do it is a great <laughs> phrase but we hate it now because it's <laughs> like you think of sweatshops and shoes and my shoes are old and you need new shoes and yeah. i don't run enough and it's just yeah just, they're just trying to sell their shit yeah but aren't we yeah. all but since they're bigger we hate them but i'm i'm trying to sell my shit too like but yeah but you're just trying to sustain yeah i would love i don't and, like business i don't want to live in this I, I incarnated here for some reason. I'm still trying to figure it out. We all did. We all chose this. Also, I don't know. I'm not a crazy pants. I don't really think I'd know anything, but just play along with me. In this game, <laughs> we incarnated into this specific time, not the 1800s, not 2300 something, specifically in this time with this technology to do to do something and it's within us and we know because it resonates true like when you're doing what you're supposed to when you're in flow you're like this is what i was 
here to do, whether yeah. you're on stage and it's like uh, no separation between you and the audience. You feel like you're acting as a single unit or whether you're drawing for a while and hours go by and you just know what the next line is or you're improvising musically. You know what the next thing is. You're just doing it in the flow. Like we're, we're here to figure that thing out. So I still don't know. Um, there was a point to all that too. There, whatever. I don't have points to. No, there doesn't have to be. To, a button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm thinking about, uh, I mean, I can relate to that. The flow, uh, being on stage. And the only reason that you don't have that flow when you're doing something creative is because you're, because of fear. Yeah. It's you just throw up this block for whatever reason. And I think it's, um, it's that uh, there's. I read part of this book called. It's got the word death in it. It's like a famous book, death and dying. Or do you know what I'm that talking? That sounds about? familiar, but I don't know. I wish I could remember the name of the book, but I remember one of the the things that stuck with me from is like we have a fear of our own greatness. I believe, and that. I think it's like you know this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. It's like. Mm-hmm. <sighs> <laughs> what are you <laughs> so full of yourself letting your light shine uh, yeah we have a feel fear of success just as much as we have a fear of failure and i think i just always want to like i i don't i don't yeah it's like oh i'm sorry uh, like i just feel like i'm being to be like doing really i've had moments where i'm on stage doing stand-up and i feel like like i'm in it you know and connecting with the audience and and I feel present and I feel authentic. And then, and then I just, it, that freaks me out. And it's like, we we're talking about before, like if you feel good, you're just like, Oh, this isn't going to last. This is here. Wait, here comes the bad part. Here comes the bad yeah, part. And I'll do preparing. that on stage, like mid set. I'll play that game with myself and psych myself out. And then how that used to manifest is I would go blank just I would, sit there. I would completely, I would see it coming, this like vacuum, and it would just suck everything out of my head. And I would be like, I have no idea what my next joke is. I would, it would be mid joke. I wouldn't even remember what the punchline was. And it was just so, uh, and then that became a fear that I would have before going on stage. Like, even if I had my set list, it didn't matter. Like, and then, I, but then I kind of played this game with myself where I was like, okay, worst case scenario, like, what if that happens? You know, just own it. And that's, and, and I kind of, that helped me through it. And then also I think just doing it a lot and then it's not as precious. Yeah. Getting it in muscle memory and yeah. even the big things, you kind of get jaded to it and that helps you be a better comic. Cause even if it goes well, that doesn't impress you. Yeah. Like if the tonight like, show hey. was there, like, oh, who cares? It's 2018. No one watches tonight show anymore. Whatever. Yeah. You're, you can have a thousand sets on the tonight show. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. That's where we all want to be. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't feel like that. I would love a set on the tonight show, but I haven't been, have you been trying to, I went through a period of really trying to, I wanted to be on the festivals, I wanted late night sets, I wanted the hour special, and then you you do some of it, and then your interest shifts to another place, and it doesn't happen suddenly, it's just a few years later, you wake up, and you're like, what happened to that guy that was all about these things, and now I'm this person who's all about these things? Do you oh, find yeah. yourself going through? I think you do. I'm like leading you into the. No, I'm over here just like <laughs> nodding furiously. Yes. Uh, but I feel like uh, I'm always like, is this is is this ambition version of me? The ambitious version of me? Is that me trying to, you know, uh, please somebody else? Is that for, you know, is that me or is that like what I really want? Uh and and I go back and forth on that. But then but then when I do have like a magical set where I'm connecting with the audience, I'm like, that would be pretty cool to be able to do that on a larger scale, you know, and and feel like um you know, like you really kind of hit some sort of potential creative potential yeah. in yourself that's um 
you know, in front of a, a wide audience. That would be cool, I think. Because I really think I've struggled so much with stand up comedy, and I think it all comes down to that confidence and just being hard on myself and expecting perfection. And um, I think my, and I keep going back to my main goal with stand up is just to have fun doing it. You know, because so often I'm like, oh, I'm dreading this. Sh- I don't want to do it. I don't want to <laughs> do it. You know, and it's. Yeah, we spend so much time booking shows. And then when the day of the show comes, it's like, oh, I've got to go to there and yeah. find parking. And like, uh, I got to go do this set. And and all the comics are in the back like, oh, why do we even do this? <laughs> and the audience is like, oh, my God, that's so cool. You guys do comedy? You know? It's, yeah, we're carnival people at this point. Like, yeah. Just so, uh, so jaded to it for whatever reason. You know Diana Dinnerman? Diana Dinnerman. No. She's... I love the name, though. She's such a cool lady and such an amazing comedian. And I just met her recently, and we were chatting the other day about this kind of stuff. And she's like, you know, if I don't do, if I don't perform regularly, I just feel weird. Me too. And I think that, I was like, yeah, that pretty much sums it up. It's like, I just, it's, and that's enough reason to just keep doing it. Have you always wanted to? Because looking back, I've always had a little performative element in my life, whether it was with the violin or the playing the make each other laugh game. Like if your parents ever went over to a parent's friend's house and then they're upstairs doing regular parent stuff and then the kids are playing Nintendo or if the kids don't have a Nintendo or board games, like if they have nothing, like sometimes we would we would just play like make each other laugh where <laughs> you'd sit on the couch and the other the people on the couch would try to keep a really straight face and then the silly person who's on the carpet in front of the couch can do anything voices like just throw your body around like stare into their eyes stick your <laughs> tongue out and just stuff like that and i always loved just uh i loved performance not necessarily theater and musicals and right. like that surrounding thing cuz then there's this air of pretension around it or at least in the cartoon version of it but just regular performance i just loved i loved watching videos of of people and um, yeah yeah i definitely i think uh i had like a sad mom and so i i think that would that i mean i don't know i think i if i was born being a clown or if that was something that i kind of nurtured in myself um but i definitely was trying to be the comic relief as a kid in my family um i love the pistols while you're doing that it's like you've got the the, the, the pistols of relief (laughs) they're water pistols with like (laughs) like dead roses coming out is that a thing were you this were you the silliest one uh in in my friends uh, no in your family yeah. Friends yeah, is a I tough mean, one because there's so many, there's no, it's not like on TV where it's like my group of friends. It's we all have little groups of friends that this group doesn't really hang out with this group. And like yeah. you sometimes see this group and this person knows this person. And yeah. Uh, yeah. It's much more fragmented and less of a, although I had, a, thing. I had very few friends cause I was in East Texas. I, Population 200. Right. I found the two other weirdos and we just stuck together. And I definitely was the funny one. Like I, they were, and they're still my audience. Like (laughs) I still am good friends with my, my girls from junior high. That's awesome. Yeah. Like they're in there. uh, One of them's in New York city and one of them's still in Texas and she still talks like this. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, I mean, I was known for making my friends pee in their pants literally literally yeah yeah. i had one time i was hanging out with this girl jana and we were at the state fair and we were on the ferris wheel and it's the one where you like the 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 car itself spins around Uh and i am afraid of heights and i was like kind of like being like no this is not cool this is not cool but i was doing it in this funny way that i was so scared but i was being funny and and then all of a sudden, and we're sitting on this little bench in the little car on the Ferris wheel. And then all of a sudden I felt like wet warmth. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, oh my God, I just paid. 
And I was like, what? And then the Ferris wheel started really moving no. and it was just everywhere. Warm rain. Warm rain. We were both completely covered in Jana's <laughs> pee pee. Um, but yeah, I had a friend pee. We were riding a horse together, um, bareback. <laughs> <laughs> the horse was bareback. Uh, we had clothes on, but it was my brother's friend's horse and he let us ride the horse and then I was like making her laugh and she was like, stop making me laugh. And I kept making her laugh and she was like, I'm serious. Stop making me laugh. And then she peed all over the horse <laughs> and me. Whoever listens when they say that, cause you know, they're going to reach some threshold and you have to see what that threshold is. Like yeah. never tell someone stop making me laugh. Cause they're going to keep going. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you don't have to do much once they're at that point and you know, <laughs> yeah, you can do nothing and just look yeah. at them and they're going to play whatever thing you did back yeah. in their head. <laughs> and then I think it's a girl thing like they just can't when they're you know they i, I don't know did the you, peeing part or yeah what? i think that was like all my girlfriends in junior high pee their pants i mean i did it i did a little bit once in the doctor's office i remember i was like just going in for a regular checkup and then my brother did something that made me laugh and like it was a little bit of pee and like just in the <laughs> like underwear and you can like so see it and I was like, oh no. And then the doctor is coming in in just a second. But this is like, I don't know if I was six or five. I was some little one. I hadn't even thought about it till you mentioned it. But I remember like that specific navy blue underwear and you can, you can tell when the water, like it's a distinct shift in color that's not as distinct as white. Yes. It's like a little bit darker navy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the the pee 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 in the pants. The pee pee in the pants on the horse and the bear bag. We used to call it spurt, you know, because just a little bit, just a little, like yeah, like a laugh spurt. But um, and I did uh, when I was a kid, I told my parents I wanted to be a ventriloquist comedian, and they got me a teach yourself ventriloquism kit, which was one of the most supportive things. <laughs> Jeez. my parents ever did but yeah, it wasn't i don't even think i would have been that supportive like I, you can do anything but, but that, that one. i didn't even it wasn't even like a real dummy mannequin thing or puppet it was they were cardboard so you would like pull a string and its mouth would open but i did learn how to make sounds without moving my mouth and you just say dasket doll a lot yeah you just like replace the you replace the 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 consonants or the hard that's really good the hard letters you replace it with a different letter and that's why ventriloquists always kind of sound like this oh but, yeah i wish people could see that because you're just going to hear the audio of it but she was not moving her uh, <laughs> lips at all that was really impressive i i was not moving my lips at all and i was saying that what well, uh, yeah, you i do i not tell or it's pretty in distinct it's pretty incomprehensible <laughs> when i do it well when you said pretty that's where your lips move because p Tr- pretty yeah, you have to u- replace the P with a T. Tritty. Yeah, tritty. Tritty. You're tritty, little girl. <laughs> you want to come back to my van? Oh, I can't say van. My aunt. My aunt. That's a creepy ventriloquist act. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is it? The kidnapping. There was, there was a, a girl in Funniest Person in Austin contest, like, I don't know, forever ago. And she was a ventriloquist. And even even those, I thought... It doesn't have to be an old man doing it. That's creepy. It's just any level of person doing it is. I, is might, creepy. I might bring it in. I might bring it into the act. I've been thinking about that with a gr- like a grandma puppet. You should try I different stuff. It's the age of different stuff right now. Every yeah. show in every other show in Los Angeles incorporates some weird thing like no microphone. You don't get to see the audience. You have to spin a wheel and then talk about that thing. You have to do a TED talk that is unprepared and the teleprompter breaks down. You have to do material from your first stand-up set. You have to write material about a rap battle in history or something. There's so While you're naked. Yeah. (laughs) There's several naked shows, right? Yeah. I've never been invited to do them. I don't know if I'd say yes. I probably wouldn't. But I think it's... I'm not. I can't. Too modest. Yeah. It's... And it's it's a different... um, It's like a different cost of entry i think for <laughs> men and women like men can just do it as a goof like, and then yeah for women yeah that's always pretty much gonna be sexual i guess there's some exceptions <laughs> i mean i've seen him. i have a friend who used to to take off her shirt during her set and it was 
she did it in a way that was so silly that it wasn't it didn't wasn't like sexually loaded or, and i remember joy joy Goring that's who used it to is but oh you can't, yeah, yeah that's what i was thinking and she'd of pull up her she'd pull up her panties up yeah. to her neck basically imitating yeah. girls at the mall today and uh, yeah yeah it was a comical one it wasn't it wasn't yeah. sexualized it was joy's good at yeah joy's is still we're, we're still pals oh i haven't seen her in forever hey, yeah joy. she lives out here oh cool i'll tell her to tune in right on yeah Listen, you should listen to this show. <laughs> we talk about you. <laughs> there was in um, your underwear. There was um, what was it? Oh, there was someone that messaged me on Instagram, and it's like I'd love to be a, a guest on the show. And me and Barbara Gray had been talking on an earlier episode about like, yeah, isn't it presumptuous when people ask to be on be on a podcast as if like something something and then i get like a same message from the same guy like oh hey i i just listened to the barbara gray episode (laughs) i I didn't mean to be presumptuous i shouldn't have asked to be on it so i didn't have i didn't have any time i just felt so bad for uh talking shit towards some people people trying to be proactive yeah (laughs) and like it probably takes a lot to do that it's like no i won't ask them you know what what's the worst thing that can happen i'll just ask him there's an old adam sandler joke where i still think it's funny where it's like just just ask her out the worst thing she can say is no and then she said get away from me you loser (laughs) (laughs) oh man i'm i have a hard time asking for for things even a spot on a show like i just is that presumptuous to ask to get a spot no, on the it's show? No, it's the only way you can do it. That's different than a podcast. Yeah. Podcasts are more curated, but a yeah. show, I think if you just go to the show, you'll get asked to be on it because yeah. especially if you're there twice in a row, like people can't bear to be like, yeah, you really you just please just I'll put you on the yeah. show. Please just stop showing up here. And, <laughs> and this is comics, by the way, not just regular yeah. norm. There's so many professions where they refer to the other person as civilians like comics refer to non-comics as civilians army people of course are going to refer to non-army people as civilians those are true civilians Mm because they're not in combat they're in combat police yeah doctors probably because they're not actually healing people we're the only ones in the you know trenches getting our hands dirty that's true everyone sees i almost drew something like that and then i there, there's so much stuff i almost drew and then i didn't and then it just sits somewhere oh you still got to do it yeah i do but my wrist gets tired and the day ends don't you hate how the day <laughs> ends like you need to no, get something I love it you love it <laughs> no no i'm i there i always am freaking out about there's not enough time there's just not enough time Even if there was 56 hours in the day it wouldn't be enough time well the other night i had a lift driver who told me that he only needs to sleep three hours a night and i was like oh my god i'm so jealous is he on uppers downers no he just said that's just the way he is like he's just always been that way and i think there are people like that that just require less sleep to be healthy functioning people i can but not consistently some Mm -hmm. nights i get three hours and i'm like i'm fine i can keep going some nights i get 12 and it's not enough no yeah i i gotta have seven hours i'm really i'm really into that are you a morning person getting enough sleep um you know i think i'm a little of both i'm an owl and a lark you know i i i i think i'm i function better if i if i I'm I'm neither. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and this is the this is the perfect part too for you've never listened to this, right? Uh, I have listened. You've to listened it. to this podcast? Yes. Oh, so you know about the ten seconds of silence? Oh, I didn't know that that okay, part. Okay, you must have missed the ten seconds. But basically, I put ten seconds, not edit in ten seconds of silence. I want to experience ten seconds of silence with the guest each time we do it. It's at a random place in the episode okay. because. Um, I guess it's a metaphor for death. You never know when it's going to come and it's silence for a little bit. And then you reemerge having been a little revitalized and it's just an interesting thing to do. And I want to string all the silences together at a later date where I have the collective silence of all the guests and me. And it's like that one, uh, composer guy that, cause music isn't just notes, it's notes and rests. So he yeah. made, he hired the whole London Philharmonic to just 
play rests for an hour and taped what? them sitting there with sheet music just playing nothing just to capture what? capture the suspense of of that there's some energy in it there the but, power of the pause mm-hmm. <laughs> well i'm not gonna look at you because that would be weird okay you can look wherever you want okay anywhere but me though yeah okay can i look at you sure all right i'm gonna because i won't be looking at you all right and go See, it's real shit, huh? That was only ten seconds. Yeah. Psh, damn, I could have done twenty. Yeah, we could, maybe I'll change it to twenty in the second season of seasons are stupid. Seasons, Call, other you than know, the, we need them. We need the seasons. The weather seasons are good, but when Black Mirror has season one and it's oh. three episodes, or it's arbitrary. Yeah, which ones it's are moot? So what's this, that? yeah, what's I was what? looking at that cat print over there. That. That's Lion Cat. Lion Cat is from Saga. It's a comic book series oh. where this hitman has a giant cat, and it's called Lion Cat, and all it can say is lying, and it says lying whenever someone's lying. So The he, cat says yeah, that? Yeah, it can detect. If you're not telling the truth, it just knows. It sees through you, <laughs> so uh, it, it, just, it just says that. And uh, uh, it's an interesting character that he has. So being a hitman, he can he can tell if someone's like, "Hey, where's this person?" And then like, "Oh, I don't know." And it's like lying. <laughs> or when he's lying, the cat knows, and he's kind of like, <laughs> they just bring him into the room like a lie detector. No, cat? he's constantly next to him, like Scooby Doo or some. Oh, okay, uh, like he's a Robin. sidekick. Yeah, it says all the time sidekick. And that's all only word he knows? Mm-hmm. Instead of meow. <laughs> I don't know if he says a meow. Or if it's a sh- I think it's a she, actually. I might have she. misgendered it the whole time. I mean, sh- I wouldn't say she looks feminine, but uh, maybe from this angle. Yeah. She's wearing jewelry, so. Oh, so going back to where you said that you wish you wrote more, mm-hmm. and you started the practice of the meditation 10 mm-hmm. seconds a day. What's stopping you from? 10 minutes a day. 10 minutes a day. What yeah. did I say? 10 seconds? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 10 seconds. Actually, 10 seconds a day would be hard. It would be. You ever hear that saying, if you don't have, if you if you have time, meditate 10 minutes a day. If you don't have time, meditate an hour a day. Wow. That's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm impressed by people that really stick with it. Uh, I just talked to a friend of mine who... He's been meditating for five years, I think he said. And he started with 10 minutes a day and now he does 20 minutes a day. That's, that's some real stick to it That makes it me want to do 20 minutes a day. It's hard. Do you meditate? Yeah, but I, I would be lying if I say I don't break the chain. Yeah. So I don't do it every day. And sometimes I miss a week just for whatever reason. I get good about stuff and then I fall apart. And recently We're I'm on a... We're the same person. We are. We're exactly the same. Yeah on the uh i fall apart with i'm on a good string now but i've recently my build order to use like a starcraft term i just recently do you know starcraft at all i'm not even a big starcraft player what is it it's a a real-time strategy game where you're the thing looking at all the things and you've got your little miners you've got your soldiers you get to choose what buildings to make what buildings like sim city but war based Uh so you're trying to build your little war camp and based on your build order is oftentimes who wins so if you decide to build like a farm first and then a barracks to make soldiers but then you're making soldiers at a rate that your farm doesn't support the person who like works that economy better is going to win so i i see my morning as a build order like okay my build order is no phone next to me phone stays in a different room have an alarm clock that's not my smartphone wow wake up don't check email. Don't check any outside world stuff. First thing you do is drink a big glass of water because you're dehydrated first thing in the morning, and that's why your body's stiff and it feels bad to have a body instead of not good to have a body. So drink that, maybe a little bit of lemonade in it or just lemon juice because you need the electrolytes. Get all that in you. Do a 10-minute yoga, like a simple morning yoga, like stretch. Just pull up YouTube, search morning yoga, find a good one you like. Get that mat out do that i do a little kettlebell workout then i do then i take a shower then 
I have breakfast, then the phone is something I can look at. And for the longest time, I used to wake up with the alarm and the phone and stay in my bed scrolling. And just you hate yourself before you're even out of bed. You know, you're not supposed to watch all those videos and know what people are up to and hear that bad news and hear oh. other people's good news to compare your life to and yeah it's a mess i re- i found myself one morning this is that's a an amazing that's inspirational like I, you need to write that down and post it for people okay well that's a great regimen uh but i that reminded me i f- i found myself i hadn't even gotten out of bed and on my phone i was trying i got like that one of those sign a petition to end the dog meat festival <laughs> and i'm like writing the festival yeah there's a dog there's all these i'm like another dog meat festival oh, i didn't get into the festival I this year <laughs> i'm gonna do stand up at the dog meat festival in whatever town and oh did China. they pay no but they put you up <laughs> Just, but all your jokes have to be about dog meat <laughs> done already done already oh. set. and i'm like trying to write a, a letter to the like president of china before like, you're why out of they bed. Sh- before I'm, i haven't even had coffee yeah no this is that's a great and i've and i've i'm still looking at my phone i'm looking at my phone uh it's an enemy we knew nothing about and we're not prepared for because I mean, at most we had like, don't sit too close to the TV, go outside a little bit. But Mm -hmm. that that's not like, uh, I don't know, it's not something that sticks with you. It it was never growing up saying, don't look at your phone and the all the platforms on it. It came out of nowhere and we're just dealing it with it. We all have like cigarette addictions that we didn't even plan on having. It was just given to us. And we don't really know what the long term effects are. I'd like to see which is worse, waking up and having a cigarette or waking up and having looking at your phone for the duration of smoking a cigarette. And I bet it's equal or the cigarette's better for you. Yeah, considering that you're, you know, you're, the stress is so bad for you physiologically. Like, the that's just like off to like such a bad start of the it day. Is. And my friend Cameron, who was, I think, the episode right before this, was talking about wanting to have more phone calls with people and using social media less. And he kind of came to this conclusion that you can't be a 1990s human anymore. Like, that that's done. Whether you can relive it in some future virtual thing, that's another question. But you can't be a 1990s person because the rest of the world is not that and they're not going to play along with you. It's rude to call someone without texting them first saying like, Hey, can we talk on the phone for a bit? Cause it's like showing up at yeah. their house. Like, Hey, can you hang out? Oh, it's just five minutes. Like, no, I was, I was doing stuff that it needs that amount of time to complete. And I need to go to this place by, yeah. And I know we're over scheduled, but that's kind of how it is. Yeah. I mean, unless you just want to be a hermit, like you just, you, you either have to kind of work within the social w- norms of now, or you're just going to, or just go like live on a mountain. Yeah. But I mean, to be fair, if you call someone, they don't have to answer. No, but there, the feeling is still true and we don't want to feel annoyed at our parents or our friends for calling us unannounced, but we do like we're in the middle of something. You're listening to music, doing the dishes and then it rings like I can't answer it. Now I have dish hands (laughs) and I can't tell you that I have dish hands because then that involves interacting with the device. So I'll call you later. And meanwhile, I'm out of my zone. I'm thinking about calling this person while I'm supposed to be zenned out doing dishes. And I just want, I want the Tetris thing to be clean i don't want a tetris block to always be falling and oh. it's never it's never finished i'm always like 60 uh. percent filled up with tetris blocks and I, I just want it to be over so it starts a new one and that's where yeah. suicide comes in not <laughs> not actual suicide but thoughts of <laughs> thoughts of you know going to that place and everyone talks about it if you i just recently discovered that you are okay page where um who was on it Chemda from uh, I nailed the ch- from Keith and nice. the girl is was just on it talking about you know her depression anxiety. Will Wheaton from Star Trek, which I didn't know that dude had anxiety and depression, and he had anger issues that were same as any anger issues. Your response to the thing is greatly out of proportion to the actual event happening. Like yes. I'll do it here. I'll be cooking something and I'll I'll drop a thing and I'll scream as though just hmm. I don't know my leg had been. 
I can't even come up with a thing right now. G- gashed open? Yeah, sometimes I've got it. Sometimes I'm like, I, I like to come up with metaphors in the in the moment, and sometimes I freeze. I'm like, it's like as if my leg had been, I don't know. Yeah, but that's no okay. I'm, I I'm never, not, I rarely come up with the, the right metaphor in the moment. I always tough. think of it later. But so you have, you find that, like, I don't think you, you get angry. You have those moments where you. I've, I've got a lot of anger. anger in me. You but got not, a short fuse. Yeah, not when I get to that state. Like right, I'm not your in threshold. it now. Yeah. You reach your threshold. Yeah, like right now, you couldn't make me angry because I'm not there. But sometimes I'll just find myself based on what's going on in the day. I'll be walking around at a seven, so mm-hmm. anything can push yeah. me to eight, and eight is not good. And 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 it's not like we have a lot of tools to diffuse that. It's because gotta keep going we gotta keep going we gotta you know it's like i can't no i can't just go sit and breathe for 15 (laughs) minutes because i'll be late for work yeah yeah i mean i i get i get mad um i'm i don't get mad very much i'm like i've had friends get mad at me for not getting mad (laughs) you seem like you're calm in general like i'm sure you have dips and stuff but your general demeanor seems calm from yeah what i know you i do have i have a lot of patience i have a i have a lot of i have a high tolerance um i mean there's certain things that are that i cannot tolerate um like dog festival dog food dog fest- meat dog, dog meat, meat festivals, festivals that really mm, yeah uh yeah like most of the stuff i post on facebook is just you know, angry about like industrialized agriculture. I get really angry about that. Um, like Monsanto stuff or what? Oh, hell yeah. Nestle owning water. There's a, there's a, a pork processing plant that just opened up in uh, Michigan and they're really excited because they have this like super fast uh, pork grinder system where they can now slaughter 8,000 pigs a day? Jeez. 8,000 8, pigs a day. And they're like, hell yeah. <laughs> like, look at us go. You know, like, that's something to be excited. Like, that's... Are you vegan, vegetarian? I am vegetarian. I, you know, I strive to be vegan, I, th- I think. I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I'm mostly... But I have been since I was 10. It was, I think, growing up in Texas around cows and i would pet them and and then all of a sudden one day i was like wait a minute and i've just always been crazy about the animals so right on and then i read a couple books and and then i'm like oh great there's no going back now i know now i know the horrors that must be tough in east texas yeah like they're just feed you grass or what oh my parents were so confused and they're not like they're, you know, they're kind of hippies. I mean, yeah, they were, they went into the religious stuff, but they were like hippie re- religious, but the, even they didn't know what to do. They were like, what are you going to eat? Cause this was the eighties <laughs> in East Texas. Sorry to date myself, but there was no, there was no tofu at the grocery store. There was no veggie burger. So I really was malnourished. I just ate like chips and cereal, <laughs> 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 but now, I mean, I I I I eat a lot of um beans. Beans are good. Protein. Beans are good. Good for your heart. The more plant. you eat, the more you fart. <laughs> That's actually not true. The more if you, you cook them enough, yeah. you they don't really make and you me gassy. <laughs> and uh you miss the rhyme cuz it's magical fruit, right? The more you eat, the more you too. Yeah. yeah. That's the other version. And I just realized you're just like Lisa Simpson cuz didn't she switch to vegetarian at 10? And I used to play the saxophone no in the way. school band, which reminded me before, I, I don't want to leave this without telling you how hard I laughed at the the princess of sex. <laughs> <laughs> you can check that out on, I guess, look it up on YouTube, princess oh, of sex. You guys, this is the funniest animation that Ramin made. I'm so glad you watched that. I, oh I, I never God. know who's watched what of anything, and I assume because... We're all so busy out here. I have close friends that haven't seen very much of what I do. But, They're missing out. I hadn't. And but I'm, they see me as, as a me. They've hung out with me, and so they've gotten that stuff. Like, I've probably said things that were funny or interesting and vice versa, where 
that wasn't made as a content, but they haven't. And same with me. I'll I have good friends who are like, oh, you put out another album? Like, when did that come out? And they're like, oh, 2016. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And I can't keep up with anything. 2016 and 2017 steamrolled over us because 2016 was all about Hillary Trump. And then yeah. 2017 was all about Trump aftermath. And then yeah. 2018 is the first year of the dust kind of settled, like relatively mm-hmm. the dust has settled in terms of what people are talking about on all the platforms and what images you're being subjected to. And, um, yeah, it's the, the first time we're like, what, what happened to those last two years? I'm tired. No, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about it like that, but yeah, two years, that's a long time. 2017 seems too far away. Like it shouldn't even be 2017 and it's, and it is 2018 and I still can't wrap my mind around that. It's, yeah. it, it upsets me, but I have to keep moving. So it it's doesn't best to not me. think about it. It's best to not think what there is no, there is no past. There is no future. It's all one thing. It's just now. Like my mom said, who's the most important person in your life? The person you're talking to right now. Oh, thank you. Uh huh. It's you, Remy. You know? You're the most. You. <laughs> she, and then she said your name. Oh, she had <laughs> Rami. <laughs> My mom like, doesn't have a Texas accent. She oh. grew up in upstate New York. Oh, right on. I say right on too much, by the way. I'm working on it. No. I say right on and and uh, and cool and like too much. And I say cool at the wrong time. So it's like, and that's when my sister was, you know, um, you know, just was announced that her cancer was, you know, terminal and she only had two hours left. I'm like, oh, cool. What? Are you I'm just serious? Us- no, I'm just using an example. Oh like someone God. will tell me a someone will tell me an example of a bad thing, and I'll 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 say cool as a word that like yes, I am listening. Go on, but right. I also don't want to be one of those people that like uh, oh, there's a car alarm. That's okay. It's part yeah, of yeah. It. It's part of the universe. Yeah. But I don't want to be one of those people that's like uh, here. I'll use an example. You just tell me like a story. It can be the most mundane thing mm-hmm. ever. Just make up a story. Should it be mundane or should it be? It can be anything. Just tell me about your day, like. Yeah. Uh, well, let's see. I uh, uh, I was going to tell you that my dog died in January. Sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> people, people that nod their head and say "sure" in between every every I, sentence is irritating. Or people that say your name of like and and I'm telling you, Lisa, it's oh, something that yeah. I realize is like, of course, that throws you off. That's like it's almost intimate yeah. when someone just throws your name. Like, if you're on a date, that's like, oh, I think they like me. They just said my name in conversation. Uh, It's like someone putting their hand on your arm or something. Yeah, with their voice. Mm -hmm. Saying my name is them putting their hand on my... Yeah, on your... uh, Back when I was doing acting, (laughs) I had to... uh, I was in an acting audition with... They, you know, sometimes they just pair you up with someone and you don't know, like two people are in the audition. You're like sitting together and one of them, I had to put my hand on the other person's leg and I'm just uh, sitting there and uh, how did it play out? Yeah. Like I had to, I had to put my hand on her leg for part of it and they're like, okay, and now keep it there. And it's just there for like a really long time. And I'm trying to make the uncomfortableness like go away. And I'm like... I'm saying this would be completely inappropriate if you weren't instructing me to to do that. And then, uh, like, I don't know why that. I guess she didn't have a sense of humor about that. Oh, like, she thought it was creepy not. or something. And then she was like, "Can you tell him to stop?" <gasps> and I'm like, "You can just tell me to stop. I, you don't have to tell the director who told me to do that to tell me to they stop." They told I, you to yeah, do it. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to do anything. Oh, commercial audition. Yeah, this is forever ago. This is like 2011 or something. I haven't done those in forever. I'm doing them. Oh, I'd love to again. I just don't have the agent or the. Oh. the time or the i'm trying to only focus on the stuff that i know that i really want to do and no one wants to do commercials you just want to get paid a lot of money for doing very little work and having residual checks and yeah that kind of stuff but no one's like oh one day i'll be in a taco bell commercial and Mm-mm. no one yeah. wa- no one wants it yeah i booked a commercial and it was <laughs> i had never done one before i can't believe i booked it i just like the callback went well and it was a uh, for some financial advising company and I won't go into it too much, but I'll just say that at the actual shoot, I kind of freaked out. <laughs> I got so nervous and I had to wear like 
a business lady outfit with high heels, which for those of you out there that don't know me, not my normal <laughs> get up. And I had to like walk across a room, pu- pulling a suitcase, wearing super high heels. And it just like the whole thing. I, I did not nail it. Did you audition in the high heels or they're like, no, you'll be fine in the heels later. No, it was like they didn't bring that. That, that they don't. They don't think about whether or not they just assume you're a professional actor. You can handle it. And heels are a completely different animal. Like try any oh dude God. who hasn't tried walking in heels before. It's it's like riding a skateboard. Like you're not used to. Thank you. The balance of it. And I was supposed to be like a powerful, successful, like go getter business lady. <laughs> So, I mean, and it was kind of a funny commercial that the, the thing was kind of funny, but uh, I just could not nail the funny because I was just, I was too in my head, you know, get like we're talking about getting in my own way rather than just being like loosey goosey and free. There was like 10 cameras and 30 extras and I didn't have any like friends to like check in with, you yeah. know, and the director seemed impatient and he was, there was one point where he was like, come on, Lisa. <laughs> I was like, hey, I said my name. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, they still haven't aired it. And I'm but you like, still got the money and everything? I got the, the day rate. I didn't get the big money because they uh, haven't aired it. I don't know. I'm like, oh, my performance was so bad. They can't even, but I'm sure, you know, I'm being hard on myself. Yeah, there's whole movies that have been made with worse performances Bad than that, I'm sure. Yeah, with I mean, close-ups on their faces during pivotal moments of the scene where you're sucked right out of the the moment. Yeah, I mean it's it's a 15 second spot. I'm sure it'll be fine. Anyway, that was a dumb. No, it was good. Uh, See, you're back on it. But you went for a while not doing that where you're uh like no, that's that's dumb. I want to say that. Yeah, but oh, to be fair, talk about that. To be fair, I do that too. Um do you let's see Ooh, it's 141 or whenever you're listening to this it's not 141 it's look at your phone now it's whatever time that is but at and the time who, kno- of, who really knows what time it is yeah where's up where's down Thank is there you. true up if there is a true up like where where is it where's the top yeah i know it's like i'm 14 and this is deep but um that's my favorite type of philosophy yeah. uh what do you think happens after oh yeah when do you have to get out of here like pr- we'll wrap it up pretty quick um, yeah, just, uh, yeah, we can, you know, just we can, it out a we can have bit. a cool down. Yeah, let's, let's start cool, the cool down. Okay, cooling down. What do you mm-hmm. think happens after you die? If we haven't addressed that yet. Mm. Do you think about it much? Does that scare you? I wouldn't say it scares me. Uh, I don't, I don't think about it that much because going back to, you can think about it all you want, but at the end of the day, it's a mystery. It it's is. a mystery. And I'm I'm all about accepting mystery as as what it is. It's like there's no knowing. And um you know, I like I I did lose my dog in January. I'm sorry. Thank you. And that I didn't mean to. <laughs> and it it does make you like that's a really intense I mean, I know that's like from, How old were they? She was she wasn't that old. She was 10 and I, uh, ish. That's, that's old for a dog though. She was little. She was like a chihuahua, but those can live. I had my last dog live to be 18. Ooh. So it was, it was, a, she had heart disease, which I didn't know. Like it happened in one day. Um, but it, it definitely, that's, that's a pretty intense experience because having to choose, I had to make a decision t- for her to die that day. And it was like I had to weigh out all the options. And that's that, you know, that's a f- sort of fascinating place, what were the options? place like, to be in. Put a lot of money into something that had a low success rate yes. or let her go with dignity and uh, painlessly. And, and with me being there with her yeah. and her being calm because she had congestive heart failure. And so if she died of that, I mean, I got her to the hospital she had fluid in her lungs, right? And that's a terrible way to die. She's like drowning. Um, and the vet was able, they put her on oxygen and they gave her some medication to pull the fluid away. So she was in a calm state. And yeah, it was, but it was basically like, this is progressive. 
we can kind of manage it for a while. Yes, it's going to cost a ton of money. But if, I mean, at that point, like if the prognosis is good, I'll, I'll go into debt. But knowing that, you know, and, yeah. and also she was a very nervous natured little girl. Like she had overcome a lot of fear. She had been abused. And, and I imagined her dealing with that panic and fear without me there. And and so I was like, right now I have this control and I can make sure this is peaceful. And so that's the right choice for sure. It would, thank you. It was, and Carrie Lendo was yeah, there. Put her down she too. came to the hospital, put her down too. Yeah. The I right know, choice. Sorry, but, Carrie. I don't know what's wrong with you, but <laughs> me and Lisa are going to have to put you down. If it we came down to much. it, Carrie, I would do anything to pre- prevent you from suffering. <laughs> um, and that is our job with animals as, as our, as being the stewards of our, you know, domesticated pets um, is to prevent them from suffering. And that I think is what I did, but I was just going to say, Carrie Lindo came to the hospital and was there with me in the room. That's a good friend. That is a good friend. Also my friend, Linus Phillips, who's an awesome person. He came honorable mention to Linus Phillips, but uh, honorable Carrie mention. gets the trophy just cause I know her. Yeah, totally. Anyway, I don't know that. Um, I think about, I, I f- imagine that Frida, I mean, I know her name was Frida. I know that dogs are different, but I do imagine that they're like, they're like, they're, she's there. I feel like she was always by my side. And I think that they're kind of like, they're little spirits, I think, hover around us. But my dad says, yeah. my dad says their spirits become just huge, like everything. But you know, at the end of the day, what do you think about where do we go after? I'm pretty much from that school because I used to be, I went through the atheist phase too, thinking that, well, it's, of course it's nothing. Why would it be anything but nothing? It's random that we're here and consciousness is a little trick that your brain mm. plays on you. But once you, once you come to the conclusion that, or, you know, thinking about that awareness can't be aware of not being an awareness <laughs> you can't be aware of it so whether you're not conscious now and then something reanimates you in you know a trillion years or a trillion to the to the trillion you know whatever number you want to use sure. it doesn't matter like cuz that space is is blank and uh then reading more into like quantum physics or even biology the way that our cells have these little things called self receptors which are little antennas that pick up a field of information that's unique to you like if you remove uh your self receptors from the cell it doesn't have any behavior but if you put your self receptors on someone else it's uh basically it the conclusion of it is your uh, field of information, your your body is a radio, like the, the music playing on the radio isn't in the radio, it's picking up a frequency that's always there. So your frequency is all that's around your body, it's not your body, but it's playing out through your body, because that's how you can experience this world, like to know what chocolate tastes like is exactly what those receptors on the tongue does to uh like it's that playing out the experiences you have or what your body is playing out so you're not in your body but you are like for this time but that's not what you are it's the whole we're not humans having a spiritual experience we're spiritual beings having a human experience Whoa. and and it makes so much more sense that the the stubborn physical world would be the subset and not the superset because of course the superset is everything infiniteness uh uh, unlimited potential. Why would it be okay? At the very basis, there's limited Newtonian physics and randomness. Why is that? Why is that at the base? It doesn't. The math doesn't work that way. You read. You read stuff. Oh, I have to. <laughs> I have to. I'm always trying to find new angles which resonate true. Which it has to. It can't just be we're all one. It's all. It's all love. I have to know yeah. reason at why you arrive that place. Yeah, and, you're uh, you're getting the science, and the and they're coming together. Like yeah. science is coming to these conclusions. Like whether through physics, biology, chemistry, psychology, it's all they're all meeting at the same place. And, and it's the I don't know, mm-hmm. right? Is it? It's like oh yeah, they all kind of, of meet the, at the 
Because to know would just be that you have a set model in this tiny, tiny brain we have yeah. embedded in Speak linear time. <laughs> medium, medium brains we have <laughs> in this time. Uh, I've said this before on the podcast, too, but I think Matthew Broussard told me this, and he's a comic who's mm-hmm. a big math guy, but he said that given that there's infinite time before now and infinite time after now, the odds of us being now, right here in this moment, aren't close to zero. It's actually zero. So it's impossible to be alive right now at this moment. That's why being alive is a miracle. To have the gift of the present moment is, it's a true gift. So every single micro moment is judgment day. It's it's the Adam and Eve story of choosing the tree of life or the tree of knowledge, which is going back to the being in your head or being in flow. And which isn't like, don't do your taxes and don't do that kind of stuff. But it's being in, you know, the love state or the fear state. And you have to make that decision at every, at every single micro crossroad. And that is what you are at the base of everything. Cause the body dissolves, the memory dissolves, the frontal cortex, all this, this little dance of consciousness we have does dissolve but the choice maker is is fundamental and that's what you are at the very very basis the the choice that you make in this moment Mm -hmm. like my dad says when a lion uh a lion kills or hunts a mouse with the same intensity that he hunts a gazelle like everything that you do it with with all of your self yeah that or if you're a if it's your taxes, if it's your taxes, do it, man. Mm-hmm. Do those taxes and do them with love. <laughs> <laughs> Don't write anything off. Pay the government more than what you owe. Get no. audited anyway. <laughs> I think writing things off is love based. <laughs> it is. And uh, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, with uh, with comedy too. Like if there's two people in the audience or there's three thousand, it's the same. Come at it with the same. Um, you know, joy and um, yeah. seriousness isn't the right word. Focus, attention. Yeah, be there. Be in every moment. Even though you can't not be in... It sucks that this whole be present, be in the moment, it's gotten twisted. Like, you can't not be in the moment. Right. Like, it's more about... Choose choose the moment. Yeah. Be fine with it, even if you're getting your limbs torn off. It's like, I'm getting my limbs torn off right now, but later (laughs) I will not be in this state of immense agony. That's the worst. That's a tough one. You probably won't get your limbs torn off. You're just giving a pep talk to somebody who's being (laughs) murdered. (laughs) As they're listening to this. This sucks right now, but this too shall pass. (laughs) Just trying to like find the positive. Uh, I do it at the dentist. I haven't had a bad dentist visited in a while but at the dentist where it's just really painful and tedious and boring and you know they're only on one side of the mouth and you know that they're going to the other side of the mouth and it's random little pricks of stuff and dentistry hasn't evolved at all it's still a sharp object in your mouth whereas the phone like look how well the phone and the computer did since the 70s and dentistry (laughs) is just no we're good here we got a hook and we'll use different fluoride paste but (laughs) in the end you're fucked and uh it's it's an annoying and your teeth thing. are going to end up hurting more after for some reason yeah but luckily they don't right now and as you were telling me about your dog's uh lungs filled with with fluid it's so easy to take for granted that we have lungs that aren't filled with fluid that i don't even know what my kidney does and it's doing it oh my i don't God. know what my heart really does i don't know where the stuff i know my heart's here the kidney's kind of here but we own all these things and we don't even know what they do there my body is so much smarter than me (laughs) like i'm yeah it's amazing yeah if you eat a banana it becomes a you there's an intelligence within you that knows how to make make it into a you you don't have to do any of that it just does it yeah so yeah we're really lucky to just be in these bodies right now and don't go the full hedonistic path because there is a you know price to be paid for everything but yeah enjoy your body and the fact that your body is working well even if sometimes it doesn't and that enjoy the parts where it it does i think that's a good 
wind down. Do you have any yeah. closing statements? Do you want people to find you anywhere? Do you want people to do anything? Do you want people to write you a certain message? Do you have a question for people? Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, I always like an Instagram follower. <laughs> a lot of, if you want to see pictures of my dogs and cats, how many cats and dogs do you have? Well, now I'm down to one dog and one cat, but we'll see how long that lasts. How old? Uh, Cash is my dog, and he's so good. Cash, like Johnny? Yeah, he's named from, after Johnny. Yeah, he's from Tennessee. Oh, cool. Uh, he's uh, he's a poodle mix, just weird looking. He kind of looks like a lemur. He's got like really orange eyes that he stares a lot, um, but he's just all sweet. Uh, but yeah, my, my oh, I have so. Oh, he's how old is he? Cash is only like six. It's a bitty bee. Just a little baby. He's in the prime of his life. Wilson the cat is thirteen and it's an old man. He's an old man and I'm a, he's about to get a like a major hospitalization treatment because he has it that's too long of a story, but Oh damn. Do you have insurance? No. It's no. gonna be okay. It's gonna be credit card credit card time no it's either it's either i get him this treatment and this is another death thing or he he's he's his thyroid is producing too much hormone and it makes them very erratic and uh he gets agitated and he's peeing out of the litter box peeing on my shoes you know you can't live like that yeah and he requires medication so but this treatment that Yes, it's over my budget, but it will completely cure him of it. And then hopefully all of those weird behaviors will stop. And I've had him for 13 years. But my vet was like, I have had clients in this situation put their cat to sleep. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, I can't. I wish I was that person that could just, you know what? Well, you can make the money back, but you you can't make them back. No, and I don't... I don't know what my life would be like if I made that choice to put my cat to sleep because he's peeing on my shoes. I don't know who I would become. I think I would become a different person. Yeah, you're making the right choice. I probably would become super successful. (laughs) We see what happens to successful people. There's been a big downfall of big success like everyone and the ones that aren't we just kind of don't know yet we're not sure i know the the dust has settled a little bit but 2017 was all about seeing the the monsters of have you seen coco no it's really good i've heard it's really good i bet you like it do you like those it's like life lessons um animation stuff yeah like i don't normally no no do you don't you don't like up you don't like uh, Did, Inside Out, Incredibles. I haven't seen any of them. Any of them? No, I'm not ever drawn to go see animation. Interesting. Although I, one of my favorite ones was that French one with the bicycle. Ratatouille? No. Bicycle-y? I don't know. Bicycle-y. Oh, no. There was no words in the whole movie. It was a French animation, and it's about this bicycle guy. He's a bicycle racer. Oh, I got to look it up. I don't you even have know to look one. it up. It's so good. It's I just walked into the movie theater and saw it and it was like, it's still one of my favorite movies. I'm going to see it. Yeah. Oh, I'm I sorry. I forget why I brought up Coco, but oh, I, I think because it illustrates that, you know, success can be a monster and yeah. Um, oh, is that? Uh, yeah. Well, I like that message. So I'll go see it. <laughs> yeah. Just relentless pursuit of success because that's what five-year-old you wanted or 12-year-old you Mm -hmm. like i didn't get to be a lot of things that 12-year-old me wanted but i also did get to be things that 12-year-old me never imagined me doing and getting tired of it and it's interesting growing older and watching the future become the past whether it's with our cell phones like our futuristic star trek flip phones becoming garbage i threw away a flip phone to the garbage garbage no one would accept it even not even best buy because no. they recycle electronics well then i have to go find a best buy but nowhere would do a trade-in type of thing like it ended up and i was just cleaning out stuff and i had to move, i know so sometimes like, we just got to put stuff in the garbage yeah the I actual know. garbage with the banana peels and yeah. coffee grounds the yeah. futuristic phone that's where it ended up well i have a pro yeah that would be another conversation but garbage is oof, I, I have, I have a, i'm passionate about that topic <laughs> compost garbage disposal garbage i'm trying to to buy the least amount of plastic as possible 
at the grocery store. Like I bring my mason jars. That's I'm, good. I'm that person. Mason jars at the grocery store? What are you putting in them? I buy from the bulk section. Oh, like the nuts and stuff? The nuts, rice. So I'm like making things from oh, dried beans. And cool. It's, That's a good idea. It's Mason time jars. consuming. Although oh, you can get cloth bags. I bring cloth bags. Even just for buying your produce. You know, those plastic bags you put your lettuce and all the plastic. Yeah, I'm bad. I need to be better about bringing my bags. We all are. But you can... I ordered them off Amazon. <laughs> they came in packaging. <laughs> but they're like little cloth drawstring bags that you you just put your produce in them. And that's a good way to not bring... Pl- anyway. That's- they're, they're trying, I think. I have faith in Jeff Bezos. I think that he's... Uh, or who knows, but I think there's this shift in billionaires trying to make the world better because they're aware of they can't just be the old school smoking cigars, hedonist type of person. I think they're much more concerned with legacy and mm-hmm. there being a world to have a legacy in because they That'd could be great. They could just burn the whole thing down or they could be remembered as someone that made it, you know, turned the ship a little bit. And that's all you can do is just turn that wheel a little bit more into that good direction but yeah um yeah i guess we should wrap, should wrap up. it up wrap because, up yeah so follow lisa on instagram or just you know message her or yeah or, or i don't know maybe don't message message if you got something nice but don't just randomly yeah yeah if you want to offer condolences about frida <laughs> yeah send send some send five bucks to the paypal or something yeah yeah you could help me pay for wilson's treatment no no, I, yeah, shoot me a, send me a line, two people. Draw me a line. My my friend Cameron, who was on an earlier episode, when I asked him this, he was like, no, don't tell anyone where to find me. I don't want people to find me. Just <laughs> gave nothing. Just wanted us to talk. Didn't want people to, he's not even on social media anymore. Oh, I'm so jealous. Interesting cat. But thanks for joining me. I had a very good time. I hope you had a good time. I hope this we was the best. Again. I enjoyed this so much. Yeah, me too. I mean, I was just looking forward to hanging out with you. The podcast is just, I mean, that was fun. But Oh, really? Because I was just looking forward to the content <laughs> and like and the likes of the content and seeing the number go up. Oh, and it's going to go up. That, equating that to my, my value. But um, yeah, thanks for coming. You're wonderful. And you are. I'm glad I know you. And, Same. And, um, that's it. That's the whole episode. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.